a three merchant. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so when it, it do it each player? Yeah, it's each player. Oh my god. So when you Balthor for a whole bunch, and then it just boop, 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 and I then it's like no idea. Three. Yeah, so you get some really big Gary swings off of that, and it's just dumb. <laughs> yeah, had a lot of fun. Are we are we on the internet? I feel like we're about to be on the internet. <laughs> you mean live? <laughs> I mean live. That's what I mean. Oh right. Um, it says my. I think my watch is a little fast though. I think it shows me at ten o'clock. Aaron has his hand, or Evan has his hand up at a at a at an angle that suggests to me that he's trying to do the intro, but I'm going to keep talking just to annoy him. I think his microphone is muted. Yeah, I don't hear you, Evan. There it is. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> that's that's why I was he was gesticulating like he was Charlie Chaplin, and I gesticulating. Hear him. Wow. Look at that big old scrabble word. All right, so. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's. Probably sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, and our co-sponsor CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I am Evan Irwin, and we begin each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Howdy, y'all. Ruben Bressler. Hi, thanks for unmuting. <laughs> yes, I was totally <laughs> muted, and I'm, I really actually appreciate that because I was like, "Why can they not hear me do like saying words?" But they could. I was, I was really interested why you were doing your Marcel Marceau act. It very... <laughs> I thought it was like charades where you were going to be like two words movie, and we'd have to like kind of guess what we were going to talk about this week. I mm-hmm. thought he was just trying to motion to me to stop. Like oh. I was on camera and he wasn't, and that just wasn't going to happen. I was going to troll him relentlessly. Yes, and you were doing a fine job of it, as it were. Well, Well, Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. It's all I'm good for, really. No, you write our jokes. Yeah, buddy. Uh, And you also also show up late to our event, so I look much more prepared, so thank you. How dare you. you. (laughs) We're we're running. There's a a counter run as to how many times we go, well, Ruben's not here yet, so it's cool. Whatever. It's like when you go out with your ugly friends, so you can look much prettier. <laughs> You're my ugly friend. Oh, wow. man. And for those who are curious what happened to the top 10 yesterday, uh, Skype died. Skype apparently like went down in various places all over the planet. Yeah. We couldn't get started. And by the time it we did come back that. on, like it was just too late for us to make it all happen. So uh, we're going to postpone it. We're going to record it tomorrow night. should be up by tomorrow evening, uh, if not first thing Friday. And, uh, and we'll get all that stuff taken care of. That said, we got to get started with our giveaway. Thanks to CoolStuffInc.com. We're going to give away an MTG gift box. Mm-hmm. I have nice. I have posted the link on Twitter at Magic Mike's Cast. I have posted it in Twitch because it will let me. And I can't post it on YouTube because it hates things. I don't, I, see, I don't know. I, see. I, I, I really don't know. But uh, that said, uh, Wizards, I think, has definitely taken a cue from Pokemon. Now, I, I will admit, this, this to me is the most Walmarty product I have ever seen Wizards make. You know, the gift box before was kind of cute, but it was squared and had all these things like, you know, stickers and dividers and stuff. And it wasn't that flashy. This is made for flash. This thing has the bubble pop outs. It's got the rare rare foil cards right there in your face. Um, it doesn't have a lot of, I don't think it has an t- infinite value, but it clearly has some value. I think, honestly, this lets, you know, grandmothers and ants of the world you know, be able to find something like, oh, he likes that magic game, you know, or, oh, she wants to, she does, she talks about deck building. Let me get this thing that's cool and shiny. Like, I think that's good. Great. I think that's a positive step forward. So if you were to receive a MTG gift box, because what, what's in, what is in the MTG gift box? Yeah. Uh, the MTG gift box, as I recall, which I am bringing up right now, um, so I can, so I can make sure I get it right. Okay, here we go. So it releases this Friday. All right. Uh, it is called a gift pack. That is the official name. Is the MTG gift pack, not the gift box. Sorry. Um, that says it has five premium basic lands by artist Mark Poole. Uh, the shooting, they're the shooting star lands. So the, they got the the fancy pants foiling process. Yes, and okay. uh, there are two premium creature cards: uh, Metalwork Colossus and Ooh. Kari Zev, Skyship Raider. Uh, there's three booster packs, a booster pack of Ixalan, Our Devastation, and Amonkhet. There's a spin-down life counter, an exclusive mini poster featuring art from Hour of Devastation. Okay. So, that's... This isn't too bad. It's all right. It's fine. Seems um, like 20 bucks. Yeah, it's a $20 MSRP. You know, you get some you get some decent stuff. You still get a draft set of, you know, kind of a wacky draft set if you'd like, which would be fun. But again, for me, this is... 
very much what you describe as on, in the industry mass market. This is, you know, sure. this is the Targets and the Walmarts of the world. This is going to look great on the shelf, and, and that's awesome. That said, again, links in Twitch, links on Twitter. Go enter it. I and posted it in the YouTube. Terrific. Uh, you're going to have to, as usual, delete the spaces that I posted in there so that we could paste it in there. We, so. we got it. We got it done. Way oh, to go, we got team. it done. Well done. All right. So I'm going to move some of this stuff around here. Uh, our first pick for this week uh, is the banned and restricted announcement. In fact, it's weird because there was none. Uh, nothing right. changed. Literally no format changed at all. Sometimes there's sort of some wacky vintage things happening or some legacy stuff going on. A lot of people that I know of have been, we're talking about Bloodbraid Elf being unbanned in modern yep. and Bloodbraid Elf into Colgon's command makes me want to hurl because come on really that's a great that's great value that's that is like bituminous blast back in the day that's insane value that's crazy crazy value um but that said the next bnr announcement is going to be on january 15th uh, uh they did not they, they specifically noted that they do not anticipate making any changes to modern uh with the 2015 january 2015 announcement we're sensitive to the timing of that announcement relative to the pro tour the modern pro tour they're bringing back and would only make a change if it were very clearly needed and given the current mm. state of the format they believe it will be extremely unlikely standard is fine um it, it's funny because again they, they kind of they leaned on sort of an outside source and they were saying well you know the world championship really only had three archetypes you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's because it's the world championships. It's one of the, if not the most inbred metagame you could possibly have, which is pros against pros who are fighting for very specific things in very specific ways, expecting very certain, you know, like certain decks they want to be familiar with and comfortable with and so on and so forth. There's not going to be a ton of brews. There's not going to be infinite sort of edges that you're able to get against your opponents uh, because they're all, you know, crazy world-class opponents. You know, like if you're at the Pro Tour, uh, and this is one of the things that they, they noted for, uh, they linked Paulo Vitor uh, Damodaros's video where he talks about some of the reasons the World Championship was the way it was. And, uh, yeah. you know, he's basically like, look, you know, there's only so many, you know, you can get a lot of edges when you're against 400 people and they're not all Huey Jensen level yeah. awesome. But, you know, when you're in this sort of this sort of little, little cube with these 24 best in the world or whatever, uh, you can't really screw around. So I thought that was Pretty interesting much. that essentially today's, you know, today's big announcement is that there is no announcement. Well, I like that they alluded to, uh, in the beginning of the post, Ian Duke, he's, he's the one who wrote this, had mentioned something about, in the course of discussing options for this announcement, we did discuss unbanning in Modern. And yeah, I do think there are several cards that could be unbanned. I actually think Bloodbraid is fine. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of a... You know, I'm kind of a rebel in this regard. I think Stoneforge is fine. Um, I, I think even Jace is fine. Like, oh, Dread Return no, is fine. No. Oh, yeah. Well, now, Dread see, you just did that so you could get the Dread Return. No, no. I think I all these busted cards are fine. Dread Return is fine. Dread Return is total location. No. I, I, keep, no, I keep joking around that I'm going to make a PowerPoint one day just to sort of prove the point of how, how fine Dread Return is. But I truly believe that. I truly believe Jace is fine. If you want to spend your fourth turn casting Jace and I'm playing Ad Nauseam, I'm totally happy to do that because I'll just kill you. Um, you know, I agree that Jace is, can have a test period in between Pro Tours. That yes. is what I will agree. Yeah. Uh, say, and either Jace or Stoneforge Mystic, but certainly not both at the same time. Sure. Um, I think that Jace is fine for Modern because one of the things that made Jace way better in the formats in which that it was legal were uh, the shuffle effects that are mm -hmm. available, either uh, fetch lands, are. which are available in Modern, uh, or Squadron Hawk, which I guess is available in Modern if you really want yes. to, um, but you but it requires a specific um, type of metagame in order for it to be uh, uh, good. Modern is a much quicker format than either Legacy or Standard at the time, so I, I think that it can have a test period um, that isn't during a Pro Tour because I don't think that you can uh, have that many dollars given away and have that big of an experiment. Now, if, if you think that they aren't testing Jace in Modern in some capacity because of people like us constantly bringing it up and, and, the, and the constant community uh, response of saying, hey, why not give Jace a try? Certainly, I think in, in, on some table somewhere attached to Magic the Gathering, they have given it some thought. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they've also the, noted that they, they just don't have time to test older formats. You know, they want to sure. make sure standard is great, standard's the focus. They screw up standard or a new standard set, that's a problem. Like, they screw up uh, unbanned or banned a modern card, it's potentially difficult for tournaments and whatnot, but they can reban those cards, whatever. They can't kind of reprint the sets that they screw up because they 
put their focus on older formats instead of newer formats. Well, I would like to think that this new play group that they've been tooting with Melissa Detora and Paul Chion and Andrew Brown, I would like to think that some of their resources are going to go towards modern. You know, we'll talk about this later in the show, but and we've said this before on previous episodes, modern is huge right now. And I think back when Kansa Tarkir came out and modern was fine, yeah, it was a lot easier to say we're not going to divert, divert to words again why do words <laughs> words are tough words are we're not going to delegate any resources to this format but modern is huge right now to the point where we've been given another modern pro tour i think the, the current state of things means that some resources are now going to go towards that i don't think there's going to be a lot but i don't think that there's none like i think there's definitely been a shift in how we look at modern to where there's a bit more priority there now now the the, the flip side of that is if everybody loves modern then why change it Right. If everybody if modern is so good right now, then why are you trying to fix anything? Why sure. are you going to unban anything, let alone something as big of a format shifter as Jace? Um, the one that I was a little surprised about is we, we've been discussing how people have been losing focus on legacy recently. Like a lot of people like legacy, but they are saying that the format is more stale than it used to be mm -hmm. uh, back when Miracles was the top dog. And then they got rid of Miracles. Um, you know, is, is it time for them to do something uh, to legacy? Um you know, maybe, I mean, did they let counterbalance off the leash again and just let it be legacy from a year ago? Um, I mean, obviously, I'm the guy that wants Earthcraft unbanned, but, like, <laughs> that's not going to really change the format in the direction that they really want it to, I don't think. I think that they need to ban or unban something to, uh, to make the format change, but not completely flip on its head. Um, well, if you want to flip with, modern on its head, you unban Jace the Mind Sculptor. Like the problem with Legacy, but modern's though, good. Modern's fine. We already talked fine. about. I know I didn't. A, you guys are over there going sure. like Jace is whatever. We can certainly Jace and Stonewars are better. Fine, I'm over here I'm like like not, freaking out at how bad that decision would be. Stoneforge Mystic is, is just like Birthing Pod. I think that they can ban Deathrite Shaman from Legacy. The shows, absolutely. But, well, I think, so th there's a couple culprits at play when it comes to Legacy. I think the first one is the issue that you brought up, Ruben, of they might have banned the wrong piece. Um, there were a number of people who were like, we're fine to, with you taking Terminus, we're fine with you taking Counterbalance, but, you know, a lot of people feel that Top was the mistake, and that that right. was sort of, what, you know, one of the reasons why we got here. The other culprit, which I used to never really buy into until recently, is the Brainstorm issue. You know, there have always been this sort of minority of people who feel that Brainstorm is a problem, it's always been a problem, but it's so... Uh, ingrained into the format that for you to, to kind of cut the, the yeah. disease out, you know, would, would cause so much damage. And especially coming from vintage, I've been playing so much vintage lately, and to see it be restricted in vintage and then go to a format where it's there's four of and you're snapping it and you're just literally abusing it, um, it, it, Legacy just seems like the format of a lot of unspoken things where there's a lot of elephants in the room that nobody's talking about. And I think until we talk about them, Legacy is going to feel the way that it does. Absolutely. I mean, Brainstorm has always been, you know, Brainstorm. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with Workshop and Vintage. Everyone yeah. has this unspoken, like we know it's broken, but we're just gonna leave it there. It's like you know how Seven of Nine has still had the Borg Nanites in her system, <laughs> and she couldn't take the Borg Nanites completely out, or else it would kill her. That's what Brainstorm is to Legacy. All right, we're gonna lean back out of the <laughs> totally geekdom there, but the Borg Nanites of Legacy. Are, is Brainstorm. Yeah. You can't cut out Brainstorm. If you take out Brainstorm, you literally kill Legacy. Yeah. Because it, Brainstorm is is Legacy. That is what the format is at this point, is the Brainstorm Fetchlands engine. If you take out Brainstorm, you shift the format so wildly away from what it is that you, you literally kill the format. Wait, it might actually be interesting again? No, I don't think that you what? make... Okay, 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 okay. Look, look, no, 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 my time now. Listen to me. All right. You guys are insane. <laughs> you literally are insane. You have to stop because this is crazy. Jace is stupidly busted. They're never going to play it on turn four. They're going to counter all your crap and play it on turn eight when you can do absolutely nothing and crush you with it because that's what that card does. It just What if wins I play games. a Lotus Cobra and play it on turn three? Whatever. The <laughs> point is that, like, Bloodbright Elf is silly because it can do busted things and it was busted and okay. For what it's worth, I totally believe that Deathrite Shaman could leave in Legacy. I would. I would personally be okay if they got rid of if they got rid of if they got rid of counterbalance and brought back Sensei's Divining Top. Who cares if you want to like fetch some lands and do some brainstorms and fiddle with the top of your deck, whatever? You're not countering spells with it. That's the whole point. That's all I'm saying. That that was my piece. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, I agree. I, I think that I think that counterbalance was the wrong piece to ban. They should have gotten rid of top. 
I think that you can maintain legacy uh, uh, miracles with brainstorm and ponder and other ways to fix things on the top of your library and have it still be a deck and still have it be a good deck. Just Hell like when no. you got just like when you got rid of Bloodbraid Elf in Modern, Jund was still a good deck. Um, I, I think that you can do the same thing in Legacy with if you just swap out the other card. Um, and obviously, hashtag unban Earthcraft. I think Earthcraft has served its 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 ban for far too long. Ruben, you'd be proud of me. Uh, the other day, I was taking some brews into the Vintage Leagues because I had to figure out what my last deck is going to be for VSL. And I got the crazy idea to brew Vintage Enchantress. And I had one copy of Earthcraft. And let me tell you... I, yeah. I kind of got some fuzzies a little bit. Like it was, great. it was better than I, I was like, oh, this is the card that Ruben likes. We'll just give this a little try. And then when it started, when the engine started going, it was like tapping Enchantress to do this thing. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 My Earthcraft breath like caught in my chest. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Earthcraft always reminds me of the very few cubes that have my favorite cube two card combo that I always put together if they have it in the cube, which is Mind Over Matter and Temple Bell. I'm always no. just just get a little verklempt when I'm able to assemble that <laughs> combo. It's my favorite. And would you remind the folks of what each of those cards do in case they don't? So know? Mind Over Matter is also banned because that card is horrendously overpowered. Uh, two colorless blue, 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 blue. Discard a card from your hand. Untap target permanent, basically. Or tap. And then right. Temple tap Bell. Or untap. Tap or untap, but you you're untapping. Yeah. And then Temple Bell is tap. Each player draws a card for three mana. And basically, you just have a uh, an Eldrazi, one of the original Eldrazi in your deck, or like a Progenitus, or something that shuffles back into your library. Mm -hmm. um, and then and you then tap just... your Temple Bell to draw a card, discard the card you drew to untap your Temple Bell, and mill your opponent out. And that's my favorite combo. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, so we're, we're going to keep it. Uh, we're going to keep our first pick to one topic. I, I agree with the viewer wow. last week that our first pick should be one thing. It's our first pick, and then we're going to move on. Very nice. To gathering the townsfolk, which is fine. So uh, there was a brand Get some new... use out of those other overlays. For That's sure. right. <laughs> we we got we to gotta get our money's worth out of that graphic design. That's right. Um, so the holiday promo for 2017 has been revealed. I'll put it on the screen now. It is some disassembly required. It's a one black yeah, enchantment that says one black sacrifice a creature colon distribute the sacrificed creatures keyword abilities among any number of other target creatures until end of turn. If it's December, you gain one life for each of those keywords and it has the flavor text of now all they needed was a jolly happy soul as the image <laughs> has a snowman hooked up to like generators as electricity is running through it. And there's also a foot in its belly. Yep. Uh, something is a foot. I don't know if you know that. But Something is a foot. Mm, Evan. Yeah. You're welcome. Well done. You're going to put your foot in your mouth over that one. Wow. Put so. your foot in your belly. <laughs> put that foot right in your belly. Uh, so, yeah, one of those, like, it's, it's silver bordered. Also, if you notice here, uh, it is the first new silver border. Right. It's you got see? the new frame it's with, got the, new with frame the holograph. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so that, that's really unique and interesting. And, and again, you're distributing keyword abilities, which is kind of ridiculous. If it's December, like Wizards is never going to care. You know, a real card is never going to care what month it is. Uh, which is which is interesting because if it didn't have that December clause, would it really be that crazy as a card anyway? Yeah, in e yeah, in EDH, I can think of all sorts of yeah. dumb uses for this. I mean, we've we've had Phyrexian Splicer as a card printed in the past that removes keywords from one creature and puts it on another. So this card could just see play without that December clause. Mm -hmm. um, haha, the, de the clause C because <laughs> what I'm telling you, this guy right here, all they needed was a jolly happy soul. Uh, that's that the that's the clause. the clause that they needed. Mm. Um, <laughs> Yeah, mm. I feel but it flow also, through me. It flows the through. The dangling me. modifier of if it's December bothers me a little bit because the creature is never going to be December, right? Wow. Sacrifice a creature if it's December, you gain one. But the creature is never going to be. In any case, wow. I'm going to move back. You're, you're working. You're too also, hard. We're going to reel you back in, Ruben. <laughs> sorry, Get you back sorry. In here, buddy. I went Get you a back. Too hard. With the etymology and the nomenclature and the whatnot and the what have you. Look at you with these ten point Scrabble words. I know, right? Yeah, his <laughs> etymologies. Look. I have a plethora of obfuscated word. Oh, jeez. Yes, things, word things. My veracitude is too damn high. 
You are a word word. scientist, sir. Is it verisimilitude? I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for. Verisimilitude, I know, is the word. Verisimilitude, that's the word. Verisimilitude. There you go. Wow. Okay. So come on, spelling bee. <laughs> get you some with that Chris promo. It was the word I was looking for. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so, uh, any further thoughts on on the holiday promo, guys? It's, it's great. awesome, it and really I. Cool. It's awesome, and I promise if anybody from Wizards is watching this, I promise I will be such a good girl in 2018 if you just put this under my tree. Just please. 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 <laughs> all, I, all I want for Christmas is some disassembly required. Absolutely. A foot in my belly. <laughs> foot in my belly. Would you please get a foot in my belly? I, I still want my, Hall- my, my Hanukkah promo. Oh. Mm. Well, that, Although, would be, did, that would be eight promos, right? Eight promos, but they're all really kind of crappy. <laughs> really? <laughs> right? Like, they're all socks and pencils. Because and the gifts the are back... supposed to be small, right? Couldn't right. you do well, like Hanukkah a... is the back-to-school holiday. Oh. Couldn't you do, like, um, you know, there's candelabra of Tanos. Couldn't you do, like, menorah of Tanos or menorah something? Menorah of like, Tanos. That would be cute. Rabbi's divining dreidel. Yes. something I was looking forward to. Yes. Um, which would be banned in <laughs> Holiday Legacy. Wow. Um, yeah. Oh my god. All right, so, that's enough of that. Fair enough. So let's move on here. Channel Fireball uh, last year had two teams, two pro teams. There was Fire and there was Ice because nobody wants to be gold and nobody wants to be, well, nobody, everybody wants to be gold. Nobody wants to be the silver. Everybody wants to be gold. Or nobody if you have the silver. black, no one wants to be gold when there's the black team. You know, it's, just, it's like Reservoir Dogs. Nobody, black and gold. everybody wants to be Mr. Black. Nobody wants to be Mr. White. Right. Um, nobody whatever. wants to be Mr. Pink. Nobody wants to be Mr. Pink or Mr. Brown. Because that's too close Super. to Mr. Poop. Uh, however, the new team, CFB, there's only one now, uh, leaving some free agents that we'll talk about. Uh, thanks to our friends at Hipsters of the Coast, uh, they noted that uh, Captain Louis Scott Vargas, fresh off his year-long break from the pro scene, uh, the CFB team will now consist of members from each of the two CFB teams from last season. That would be Martin Yuza, Josh Utter Layton, uh, previously of ICE, plus Mike Sigris, Ben Stark, and PVDDR, previously of Fire, which leaves the other... <laughs> Fire and Ice players, such as Eric Froelich, as free agents. So LSV did mention, apparently, that the, there's a chance that Channel Fireball will add a second team. However, this, to me, clearly says, you know, they thought about it, and we're going to go with a singular, this is the team for CFB, and and that's the end of it. Which, you know, again, you have two teams, you've got some costs involved, there's a push and pull of how do you promote one team without making the other one seem crappy, or you're promoting this one too much, or this one's winning too much, and this one's, like, losing too much. There's, there's a lot of, I think, conflict that kind of just naturally arises because you're trying to sort of have the cake and eat it too. You're trying to have the fire yet also have the ice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think this news is so unusual. You know, we see this all the time, you know, sort of the, the, it kind of reminds me of like a lava lamp. You know, you see teams merge, you see teams separate, you see players go. I remember a couple of years ago, uh, when Star City used to sponsor teams and then they, they decided they weren't going to do that anymore. And then there was the big announcement that a lot of the guys moving to channel fireball and, you know, me, the outsider perspective was like, oh my God, what happened? And they were like, um, nothing. It just didn't work. <laughs> um, and so this is just a Tuesday for them. You know, this, this doesn't mean anything happened. It doesn't necessarily mean that anybody did anything wrong. This is just sort of the nature of the business. You know, if you really keep your eyes peeled, you can sort of just see, you know, it's, it's common for them to get shuffled around and wear a different Jersey one day. And it's just, it's just business as usual, really. It's exciting though. Like, I mean, like I said, people have been really waiting for LSV to uh, get out of the booth and get back on stage. And I'm interested to see uh, what his first foray back is going to be like. So yeah, it's, uh, it's something else, uh, this, this Magic the Gathering team series, because I feel like this is going to happen literally every year where we're like, oh, I wonder if there was an argument. And it's just like, no, this is just, <laughs> this is just people. This is just how people work. Also, we've talked about how there are certain folks who are journeymen. They're, they have team wanderlust. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Eric Froelich is a great example of this. Jerry Thompson, Brad Nelson are both other examples of this where, you know, you have these core groups of people that always stick together. You know, you're, you're going to have... Uh, like you know, like LSV and PV and you know and uh, and Raptor are you know go together like peanut butter and jelly and also other jelly. Like they are always going to be on a team together given the opportunity. Peach Garden Oath is never going to separate unless there's a, a major shakeup. Those would be news stories that would certainly we would talk about for half an hour. And salacious. And, yeah, that, those would be with you and your SAT words now. 
You'd be, <laughs> chewing, you'd be chewing on our nails waiting for the episode to come up for us to talk about the major breakup. But when it's when it's Channel Fireball Ice and Channel Fireball Fire, it's not that big a deal. Like we these were put these were boy bands that were put together by the the record label to begin with. So you know, and, and especially considering that neither of the Channel Fireball teams made the finals of the team series last year, it's not surprising to see huge shakeups like this to try to put together a super team, to try to, you know, recom recombine everybody and see what's going on. Now, uh, add to that the fact that Luis Scott Vargas is coming out of the booth, one of the best five Magic players of all time, and he needs a home. Uh, it didn't, it, this didn't surprise me that much at all. I mean, if you're gonna put it in boy band terms, just imagine, you know, there was 98 degrees, and yeah. then there was like O-Town, and now yeah. it's like, you know, uh, O-Town. 90 O-Town. 90, 98 really? towns. Yeah, O-Town. O-Town. Well, that's where I'm I at. I remember O-Town. Right? Can, that that so, yeah. can I just say that that song, Liquid Dreams, still makes me uncomfortable, and I'm a 34-year-old woman. Mm-hmm. I heard it on the radio the other day, the other day and I was like, no, oh, like I couldn't. <laughs> it's, oh. it's creepy. I'm just making a silly joke. And speaking of silly jokes, I have to run this. I have to go back around, thanks to viewer Thomas Royball, uh, who mentioned Gay is Dreidel. I saw that's, that's good quality. That's just that's just good good old fashioned quality. That is so good. Add add one add one mana to your mana pool for each day of Hanukkah. It is <gasps> nice. My God. <laughs> so uh, so Ruben, I'm gonna pull up the page here. <clears throat> There's a lot going on, and and I'm gonna note here. I feel like this weird fire hose-esque way of presenting this event and this series completely agree intimidates just the hell out of me just me i'm just like going whoa so let's bring it up here okay i'm gonna bring up the 2018 magic online championship series okay i'm gonna i'm gonna just start scrolling okay i'm gonna start scrolling there's earning qualifiers and a bunch of stuff there's some scheduled events there's pro club stuff leaderboard stuff there's monthly events. so many bullet points i'm just Evan. halfway through i am keep going and there's open defense there's a championship here thing and there's a participation net seriously yeah. i have, I have a the ton cast wall of text it has intimidate it really does I, I i'm just like wow okay i get it this is a whole lot of stuff and it's going to take a whole lot of reading and understanding and asking questions and asking some more questions and going back and looking at the links and hoping they have the answers ruben tell yeah. us what is going on with this mox if how I would it, it's really different. rather not but i'm going to anyway so let, let me sum up the magic online championship series uh, you still earn your qualifier points. You still earn QPs to qualify for the monthly events. Um, and then, so you get into your monthly event, and if you get six match wins in a monthly event, you get invited to the playoff. Mm-hmm. And then the playoffs... Playoffs! Um, <laughs> um, are going to be, I guess, four times a year, probably one for each Pro Tour. First and second in each playoff qualify for the mocks the championship Mm -hmm. plus they get a pro tour invite for the corresponding pro tour plus they get invited to the pro tour challenge now the pro tour challenge is an additional tournament uh i think held during the pro tour that's like a pro tour qualifier that's an in-person event located at the same pro tour Oh man, they did this once before, and I think that was how Reed Duke qualified. I I can't recall, or maybe they were holding at the time. This was weird. Right, like Amsterdam. So there used to be the PTQ at the Pro Tour on Sundays, which was always like a thing of like, oh, he won the PTQ at the Pro Tour. The Pro Tour Challenge is going to be a four-round Swiss event, um, and I, I, I don't really understand exactly what. The purpose of it is other than to give away prizes. Like if you 4-0 this, then you get some money, basically. But there's no additional invite uh, uh, associated with it like the old PTQs at Pro Tours. It's basically if you 4-0, you get some money. Um, it's like a rebuy event, kind of. Wow. All right, and that's so- that's about it. There's so much more going on, too, though. Like I don't – I. I this is a really complicated system that I need someone smarter than me to just summarize for me at some point. See, that's what that's what I'm hoping to find. Well, I, well, do I don't have s- it. Is the problem? I like I read through all this, and it's like, I like I see that if you get first place in a playoff, then you get some packs and some play points and some sets, 
and then if you do well in this event, then you get some more things. And if you do good in a monthly, then you get this stuff. But all, the, the connectivity of it is super complicated for me. I do want to kind of splinter off and talk about one thing I saw being discussed on my feeds that's a little more digestible, I think. And, and it may not have anything to do with the the flow, but it's something that I felt really passionate about. So Cube April and Lee and Drew Levin and several other people were talking about the qualifier points. And one of the problems being that they seem to expire. Um, and, you know, Lee's been tweeting out that, you know, you've only got one more event to use these points before they disappear. I think they're good for one year. And I think Cube April brought up the point yeah. of, well, why do they have to expire? Because that feels really bad. The vintage challenge that I won two weeks ago, I got about three, I don't remember if I got between three or six, um, but I got three to six of those and then i was told oh and you've got two weeks to use them and i was like uh like i i have plans like i can't like, that felt really bad to you know do well in something and then be told that you have you know 14 days and that they're they're only formats that i don't play and if you don't get to use them will they just disappear and so you know there was some discussion about well what if you because lee was like well if we if they don't expire that means the events get too big and then someone was like why don't you just cap the events then and lee was like well this is too many characters and um i would like to see some change on that front because it does feel very bad to um you know spend your year working for something and then say it doesn't work out or say Say, um, you know that they expire. I, I just I wonder if there's not more space there to kind of play around in terms of what we do at the qualifier points. There certainly is. I mean, the other thing that bothers me is this whole is the website. It's like you've proven the ability to make infographics in the past. Yeah. Why why can't like what like why are we hoarding our ability to make easy to read web pages unless they're trying to make this intimidating. Like maybe they don't want people entering these events. And I seem to recall there being an infographic for this very event too. Like I remember they had like the little blue people and the green people and it was like the the flow chart of like da da da, these people do well and there was a square. Like I remember they did that's how they described it last year and to to kind of see them go back to the wall of text is is discouraging. It's it's very intimidating. It's weird because I was trying to talk but my mic was off again. It's just weird. <laughs> it's way too that? I, I don't know what's going on here, but I would say I would put it in this lens, okay? Because, um, you know, the, the Pro Tour, for example, says that if you qualify for the Pro Tour, they will pay for your plane tickets so you can make sure you can get there, and that's how you make it happen. Um, whereas, you know, for when I was at SCG and there was the Invitational Qualifier Program, it was, well, you know, if the, the IQs that happen in this quarter are for this Invitational only, then that creates the feel bad of I qualified for an Invitational across the country, but I can't make it, and so after the Invitational, this thing is gone. It's very, it seems very similar that I earned these qualifier points and then the event happened just right after I got to where I needed to be and I couldn't make the event for whatever reason and here we are. And yeah. I mean, if, if the events are too large, you can't break them up. You can't do like another thing. You can't say, well, if it's full up by X, you know, X time, we'll make another flight. Like, really? I, I don't know. It just, it, it seems really arbitrary and, and, and almost, and again, this is yet another reason why you're why you're going to say you know what this is just a big complicated mess and i'm not sure what i'm supposed to be having i'm not sure when my points happen and when they don't why they go away oops they went away all of a sudden here's a here's a huge wall of text good luck you know trying to digest it all i think that's a problem mm -hmm. so either way uh aaron can you tell us a little bit about the just announced scg 2018 or scg tour 2018 schedule yeah, so Cedric Phillips uh, posted an announcement on the 16th, uh, uh, revealing the schedule for, I'd say, half of, of 2018, uh, where the Opens are going to be, what formats they're going to be. Uh, some really good news here for me personally. Uh, my hometown of Milwaukee uh, is getting an Open again uh, in April, which is modern, uh, which is great. Uh, we did not get an Open this year, which was very sad because we've had Opens for the past two or three years. Uh, so it was very strange that we didn't have one this year, but it seems like they're kind of spreading the love again. Uh, we're going all the way to Indianapolis. Uh, Worcester is getting a legacy event, which has a big legacy scene. Uh, three team constructed events, a uh, lot of modern. Uh, Cedric, you know, goes on to say what we've been saying all along, that modern is huge right now. And so they definitely want to give people more modern. And they're also giving us more legacy classics. Uh, we're only getting one legacy open, but you'll notice there's more opportunities to play in the classics. And that is because Cedric said that there has been an increase in attendance, which is a good thing. That means legacy players are coming out. Uh, 
out. They're saying, we love this format. We want to support this format. Uh, SCG sees you, and they are giving you more events to play in. So that's really, really good news. Um, this whole thing just seems like it's really good news. They also introduced some news regarding the playmats. Uh, we're getting some really sweet playmats next year. Hostage Taker yeah. uh, on a playmat, Oblivion Stone, uh, Invocation Doomsday. And also, uh, to people who win the Invitationals, you also get to be on a playmat. Um, you get to have the uh, the token that you get made in your likeness will also be put on a playmat. Uh, so I'm really excited to see people. Uh, hopefully, Emma Handy gets on a playmat. I would love to see that. And I, I thought this was very well received, and I'm excited to uh, get back on the SCG Tour next year. I mean, I think... Uh, for for what it's worth, I, I I think the invitational winner on the playmat is a pretty terrific idea and actually solves a lot of issues uh, with a, a variety of things that I know internally that they can that they're now pretty happy about to kind of just check that off. So that's that, that was that was great. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple other things I wanted to point out. First of all, uh, the Philadelphia Open is in a city called King of Prussia. Yeah, uh, which is not really Philadelphia. Uh, <laughs> I lived in the Philadelphia area. For about a year last year, uh, in Bethlehem, and when I say Philadelphia area, what I mean is I lived an hour north of Philadelphia, and King of Prussia is about ten minutes to twenty minutes south of me. So you're about half an hour outside the city at least. It's a nice area, but it's not Philly. Um, that's the, you know, so that's the, it's, it, it. would be like calling the Worcester Open the Boston Open. Um, mm. Would be the equivalent there. It's really not in Philly. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out about this was, boy, heck, is there a lot of team constructed. Um, modern, I get. Modern is so much fun for people to watch, and people love playing it, and it's far and away the most popular format. And it's going to keep the quote-unquote pros away, because, uh, you know, standard pays the bills, uh, and modern doesn't really pay the bills nearly as, as well. Um, but... Three team constructed opens is a ton of constructed opens. They they sell uh, out. Uh, I I I can clearly recall them announcing that the previous ones have sold out. Um, and it's it's it, they're just fun. You know, it's an opportunity to um, see you know to go with your friends and just have a really good time. That's also a format where you can uh, play all three formats. You know, so one of you plays Legacy, one of you plays Modern. Again, it's a chance to see more of these other formats. Um, I think it's more just the spirit. You know, people sort of love going into it. I don't know anybody personally who goes to these events and like, it's not that they don't. They don't. It's not that they don't want to do well necessarily. But I feel like we see more people let their hair down at the team constructed events where they're there with their friends. You know, I, I see people who are more likely to play it out simply because they're there with they, they got a friend on either side of them. And it's just the spirit of it is is very positive, and I think it makes the games more fun to watch, and I think it makes people more likely to come out for them too. Now I've heard that they're going to reschedule this Dallas Open because the Hunter Burton Memorial is the yeah. same weekend. And that's a very important tournament for folks in the Dallas area. Um, so I, I've heard that they're going to look into rescheduling that event because people are going to go to one over the other and it's going to hurt both. Um, yeah. And it's Dallas, so it's not like it's a, a hub that can support both major tournaments. Yeah. Um, and, and then the last thing I wanted to mention is still no Players Championship. No 2018 yeah. Players Championship um, with no further comment, really, on <laughs> But yeah, no, Jim Davis. That, so. Jim Davis actually made a tweet about that this past weekend, noticing that or he felt that without the Players Championship, that there was a lack of like storylines and there was a a lack of a reason to really root for people. Um, you know, he mentioned that while he was watching, he just didn't really care. He was like, "There's nobody I'm following. There's no conflict," and he really felt that that was absent since they took the Players Championship away. And for me, the removal of standard as the main format and replacing it with modern speaks to that as well. Mm -hmm. I think that the pros prefer standard. I think that the big names prefer standard. Now, it depends on who you're trying to attract. Obviously, Star City Games has never been... Star City Games has made a clear decision that they are not a competitor of the Grand Prix circuit. They're, they're trying to not be a direct competitor, just like Magic is not trying to be a direct competitor of Hearthstone. <laughs> it's still the same player base. Yeah. It's just you're, you're going after a different facet of that player base. You know, that Star City Games open series money, I guess, would be the equivalent. <laughs> Never mind. But the point is that modern is much more casual friendly. People like modern for brewing more, um, gives them more options. 
Um, and, and they like watching it more, uh, very clearly. Obviously, the numbers don't lie. If, if, if the numbers suggested that more people played standard, then there would be more standard events. Now, that's probably skewed by last year's standard environment that was atrocious for a long period of time, and now standard's good again. But we'll see after the Pro Tour, standard's good again, right? So, you know, but people love modern, just like we were talking about. So we'll have to wait and see. The schedule was made during a period when standard was real bad, though. So it's it's possible that some of these uh, are subject to change. That's fair. That's my opinion. All right. So uh, so moving on here, it is time to get your tin foil hats on, everybody. Let's get them Love nice, it. nice and, and square and and just shaped to your dome. Because nothing I love more than a tinfoil hat. Oh man, there is the conspiracy theory that the scrybug is real, the scrybug is still happening, and wizards just won't fix it. This is the the idea that if you scry something to the bottom, you're actually just scrying it to the top and you're drawing it. Or on on Magic the Gathering online digital objects. That's correct. Not Magic the Gathering Arena hashtag that or Magic online. the Gathering real life physical objects. Correct. Only on Magic the Gathering Online do you have the thought that if you're scrying, either you say you scry to the bottom and you draw it, or you're actually looking. Well, you're you you're actually looking at your bottom card or something. You said, Ruben, there was some other way to look at it. There was a rumor. It. Yeah, there was a rumor that the UI was basically lying to you that you were looking at the bottom card and putting it on top or something like that. I don't know exactly. I mean, there were lots of explanations. Um, or, or potential explanations, one of which was basically that the UI buttons don't do what they say they're doing. Right. So uh, ultimately, there was a few threads on Reddit, and it was like, oh, we got them. Like, we found it. Someone was like, hey, go look at this right here. Uh, Seth, uh, you know, our, our friend Saffron Olive uh, did a video where he scried his fourth copy of Panharmonicom to the bottom, and then he draws it, and it was like, oh, we got him, guys, we got him. And it was like, his, his mouse cursor was actually over the top button, even though the bottom was was highlighted, the top one was, was right there. So he could have simply just misclicked. And for those who are doing sort of their own tests, they seem like it's fine. And for those who are doing some automated tests, they also seem like it's fine. Uh, so, you know, ultimately, I think this is sort of like one of those like silly, fun, almost sort of, uh, uh, what would you call it? Um, a, uh, they made a whole movie about it. What's it called? Uh, not an old wives tale, but a uh, urban legend. It's an urban, urban legend. legend. Yeah, it was not a good movie, but they still made a movie about it. Um, yeah. Hey, the first one wasn't bad. The second one was dreadful. There was there only was one urban one. There was only one urban legend, which is somebody's hiding no. in your car waiting for you. That's it. That's like the only one. No, which... the Pop Rocks. Oh God. Pop Rocks and diet soda, or Pop Rocks and soda. Did somebody right, like right, swallow right. a watermelon seed and like their their stomach blew up that, or something? Yeah. Oh my God, are you serious? I just made no, that up. No, that's the that's the urban legend. <laughs> Oh, okay. So that that's no, but silly. I actually have a tinfoil hat theory. I have I ever told you my tinfoil hat theory regarding saffron olive? He doesn't really okay. exist. Go on. Thank you. There are no selfies. And to be clear, let me preface this. I love Seth. And that this is no shade, but no selfies. There's no Instagram. He's never been to events. There's never been sightings of him. He doesn't turn his camera on for streams. Is he just comprised of like six Bulgarian orphans and like a puppet? What are we dealing yeah. with here? He's like, three ducks in a man suit. I, not, that's what I want to know. Like, who's the man behind the curtain? Now, it could just be a dead mouse situation where he just always wears a mask when he goes out <laughs> in public. The, the 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 popular EDM DJ Marshmallow was performing at the Win where I deal, and he walked by one day while I was dealing with his like Lego head on. If you guys okay. know what Marshmallow looks like, he has this like white suit that's all graffitied, and then he's got like a Lego. A Halloween costume head, and he walked by with the head on. So it may be that it may be that we've seen him before, and he does go to events, but that he when he goes out in public, he doesn't want to be recognized. I'm fascinated, though. I'm just like, who are you? Like, in any case, uh, the most the most blatant examples of the scry bug were during Saffron Olive's stream when he had two uh, panharmonicons in play scryed a panharmonicon to the bottom and immediately drew the fourth panharmonicon. Um, and apparently it's happened a ton on Conley Woods' stream. Conley is a huge proponent. He has the tinfoil hat screwed onto his head uh, right when it there. comes to the scry bug. Um, so, you know, I mean, 
I think that a lot of this is confirmation bias. You know, when it happens, you remember it. It's much more memorable when you when it happens. Yeah. Um, you know, I've long thought, you know, uh, and and I, this is probably still confirmation bias on my own, where I, you know, am in, in a draft on Magic Online and I keep four lands and three spells. I know 80% of the time I'm going to draw a land for my first draw step. Hmm. If I keep four spells, three lands, 80% of the time the top of my library is going to be a spell. Like that's that's what my that's what we call confirmation is. bias the gathering. Yes, that's confirmation bias the gathering. Fantastic. Yeah, so I had a moment knows. like that. I had a moment like that today. I was playing in a vintage league, and I swear everybody I played had a graph digger's cage in their opening hand without any pop, without any digging. It was just turn one cage, and I was like, "Do you bastards just always have it?" And then I had to take a second, and I was like, "Wait a minute." I was like, "Think of all the times you've gone hog wild, and your opponents have had nothing." So when you really take a second and like look back at your history, it's easy to sort of dispel those those myths of being like, "It's really not like that." <laughs> I've I've been the. Um... Have you ever worn a tinfoil hat, by the way? Have you actually gotten out some tinfoil? No, but I did accidentally made a hat. A, I did accidentally fuse a fork to a microwave floor once, because yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder if it would work, is my point. Like if I made a tinfoil hat and I put it on, would I suddenly like have a clarity of mind? Like how freaked out would you be if you actually made a tinfoil hat and then suddenly realized that chemtrails were real? You know what I mean? <laughs> like in real life, like if that, if you actually did it. Right. Jet fuel doesn't know still beams. Okay. So, right. all right. So we're gonna move on here. Uh, so channel fireball, uh, a few was a few weeks ago, uh, unveiled a new agreement for their judges, uh, as right. contractors and here's what's expected of you and so on and so forth. And in, uh, what I would describe as a classic sort of magic player, uh, uh, behavior, which is there's a problem. We're all going to freak out about it and put a nice big spotlight on it. But then they came back and they more or less addressed every single grievance problem that existed yeah. and crickets and not a lot of people are talking about it. So, so I, I want to give it on, I want to do sort of both sides here. First up channel fireball should have read their contract. You know, it is on channel fireball that they had a bunch of really weird, dumb, like we didn't mean it this way stuff in there. This stuff is legally binding. Can you please give it a little bit more credence? You kind of yeah. you kind of making yourself look bad when that stuff happens. Okay, Whoop. moving on. All right, now what they did was they fixed all of it. Best I can figure mm -hmm. here. All of the silly stuff is gone. The tax liability, whatever, it's very clear. They've removed guaranteeing regarding you know uh, the, the you know guaranteed performance stuff or whatever that they could just sort of get rid of you or not compensate you or something if you didn't meet a certain standard that wasn't even defined. They just got rid of that and said that all contractors are going to use their best efforts. Um, you know, the, there's only there's certain things you can be removed. Or you don't need liability insurance for. anymore. You don't need the silly liability insurance, let alone for years afterward, which is just crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's it, to be, to be clear, you'll be, they say you'll be insured for public liability at our events and CFB events will provide that insurance at no charge to judges. Thank you. Now, <laughs> they just, did leave in, they did leave in binding arbitration, which is awkward. Um, I don't want to get into too much exactly what binding arbitration is, but basically it's a thing that's legal in California to do. And it's, a, it's not as good for the contractors. But it's that that's the it, it's, it's not a deal breaker for me if I were signing this. Sure. Yeah, I think they did a really good job. You know, when I heard that, I think you guys were the ones that told me that they were going to be eventually addressing this. And I think they'd set like a date and time and they were like, we'll, we'll be back with some more information. And I was kind of pessimistic going into that. I was like, oh, they're probably not even going to touch this. or they're going to find a way to, you know, shell game it and make it look not so bad or whatever. But no, they did a really good job addressing this. And I kind of agree with you, Evan. It's like, why didn't you just do this right the first time? You know, like, why are you? And I feel like we see this a lot. And, and we've seen this sometimes with wizards where they will purposely you know sort of take it to the nth degree see how far they can take it see how mad they can kind of get people or how polarizing it can be and then be like we're just kidding we're just no it's fine and it's like no like don't do that stuff like just don't you know kind of know your audience and then you don't have to do that to us because it starts to feel a little manipulative at times right so for those who, who aren't aware just real quick uh, binding arbitration involves the submission of a dispute uh, to a neutral party who hears the case and makes a decision so. Right. It basically makes it harder for the contractors to complain. Essentially. And there's some other, then that's also things are going on, you know, for the, the whole crazy Weinstein thing that's happening in, you know, right. in, in 
in other places, and we're not going to talk about that stuff. The point is, now <clears throat> they updated their agreement, they, I think, to to yeah. to at least address a lot of the problems that they they had pointed out. Oh, absolutely, and I give I give Channel Fireball a lot of credit <clears throat> for actually listening and and changing. I mean, it seems like they do this a large percentage of the time, which gives me hope for the future that they won't be a classic monopoly in which they basically say, "Hey, everybody, we run this now. This is our city." Get off our turf, and then don't listen to anything ever. Um, if they change this, then you know, and they, they have a history of listening to people's grievances, so that's exciting. Um, the it, it there is a bigger issue at play here, which is it is so hard to be a magic judge. Like if you get your twenty five dollars an hour, you're you still are losing money at uh, mm. as a magic judge. Like the <clears> amount <throat> of dollars per not just hour but dollars per energy expended is so astronomical now that it's almost unfeasible as a human being to be a magic judge which is really unfortunate and a, a large reason why a lot of the judges want to have some of the benefits of being employees um but with travel with hotel with all these other fees it is getting to an a an unreasonable point i mean which has little little to do with the contract other than it's both both things have to do with being a magic judge, um, but well, the know. other, I mean, the, part of it is you know uh, the fact that there is no sort of group of judges that uh, sort of have banded together. <clears throat> to try not to use the U word, but you know, in a union esque fashion, of these judges are together and they can uh, and they can essentially negotiate because right now the judges have more or less no negotiating power. It is here's the deal. You like that? You're okay with that? Because yeah. that's what you're getting. And there are certain, situ certain situations, and I've read where judges explain that, look, if I take the compensation offered, I'm literally paying them for the privilege yes. of judging that event. Correct. And that's and that, to me, is a huge problem. But, you know, that that said, I do know that there were many judges who were very happy about the changes. Uh, but yeah. the, the, the differences in, uh, for those who want to go to the MTG judge subreddit, uh, they're talking about the differences in compensation between SCG and Channel Fireball and, and whatnot. And feel free to dig in as much as you want to uh, into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So move on here a little bit. Uh, there was a new arena stream, a MTG arena stream. It's really cool that it's becoming a little bit more normalized for me. You know, that yes. we keep talking about it, it keeps showing up, we see screenshots, we see what they're doing, they're talking about, uh, the one of the latest is that they tap the cards eight degrees, mm. you know, and, uh, and then that's it. If somebody did that in real life, I would punch them in the mouth. <laughs> you tap your like, cards. When it says tap, it doesn't say just like poke it slightly. Make make the cards askew. It's not an askew symbol. And I think it turns them like gray or whatever. There's another sort of you know visual right. cue that it also changed. But the yeah, fact yeah. is, they're not tapping stuff like that. And it's and it's it's becoming more normal. And uh, and it's funny because there's now there's already a website called mtgarenapro.com, and they put up a handy dandy, and I'm hiding on the screen here, a battlefield survival guide where they show you what a flying creature looks like, what summoning sickness looks like, and they also have every icon, and the, again, these are subject to change, but every icon that the creatures are currently using as, you know, sort of ways to tell you things. They have double strike or hex proof or menace or whatever. All of these different icons are there for you, and again, this to me is just part of what the content I think we're going to see coming forward is going to look like when we're going to talk about Arena. Uh, but one of the most interesting things about the stream was not so much that it happened, not so much that there's a website that's showing up all of a sudden, uh, but really that Numot the Nummy, uh, you know, our, our friend Kenji, uh, also streamed alongside Trump SC. And Ruben, can you tell us a little bit about that streamer? Sure. Uh, so Trump SC is a, is, a, is a Hearthstone streamer originally from the StarCraft world, hence the SC after his name, and Trump is his battle handle. He's probably the third or fourth, probably third most popular Hearthstone streamer. When he streams, when he's online and just like playing Arena uh, or, or just playing some ladder in Hearthstone, he gets like 30,000 people watching him, right? It's like it's like Kriparian and Amaz, who was at the Pro Tour last time, and then Trump. It's like those guys at the way top. Um, and there apparently was a little bit of backlash from him yeah. just being the guy 
Yeah, Did they invite I, it, which was weird to me. Yeah, I was seeing some kerfuffle on my feed uh, from people who were saying that it was sort of an obvious grab or, you know, maybe they should have picked like actual magic streamers to sort of pair up with Kenji. Um, yeah, there was some discussion about that. I didn't really have a dog in the fight, but I did see people kind of sit up and take notice and say, you know, wow, what better way to sell magic players on your product than to bring in a guy who doesn't play magic? And it's like, well... You know, but that's what they're trying to do. It's like they're trying to expose this game to people who wouldn't normally take a look at Magic Online right now. Um, you know, if they can turn them on to this game, I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily. I mean, I think well, for me, and we spoke about a little bit in the pre-show, was never had I so clearly seen Wizards go from literally writing, you know, in an article that Hearthstone is not a competitor to... We got this guy who's really popular Hearthstone to show off our new product because we really need hashtag that Hearthstone money because because yeah. they need it and they need it bad. Now, <clears throat> we also discussed uh, if only there was a Pro Tour winning player that they could have gotten for this stream like Stanislav Sivka or I got or you Brian one better. Kibler. Or, yeah, you ruined it. But Or Sorry. they could have gotten somebody who won a Pro Tour, is in the Hall of Fame, is doing work for Blizzard constantly, already has hundreds of thousands of subscribers on YouTube now, like the Brian Kibblers of the world who could show up and actually know what's going on and talk about magic. Oh, my God. Oh. Like, and who's been vocal about the fact that he would like to help. You know, I seem to recall, you know, when he was when he was sort of teetering between the two worlds, you know, I, I seem to recall him saying on social media, like, I would love to help. I would love to provide feedback to make Magic Online better or to even make the, the Pro Tour better, make the circuit better. You know, Kipler, in, in my opinion, has never been terribly smug about things. You know, he's never been one to, like, say, well, to hell with y'all. You know, he's always been like, hey, I'm doing this thing. It is more successful. I am enjoying it more, but I would love to be a part of this and so I don't think it would have been too much to ask to make that phone call and maybe they did we don't know we don't know maybe they did make these phone calls and these people were either not interested or not busy but it did kind of stand out like you said that there were uh, obvious candidates who have you know deep roots in magic that weren't around and yeah. right exactly it, now, just, it feels the, really the funniest, strange the funniest part of the stream to me was that uh, when they were talking in the interviews they didn't bring up anything of Trump's Hearthstone play or anything of Trump's StarCraft career. They were like, so you were part of the Dungeons & Dragons Stream of Annihilation promotion for the Tomb of Annihilation release. And I'm like, yeah, Trump does play D&D, but like that's, <laughs> that's a little – that's – that's like saying, please welcome actor from The Towering Inferno, O.J. Simpson, right? <laughs> like that's burying the lead a little bit with with – a you know little what I'm bit. Like, a little please bit. welcome song and dance man Christopher Walken. You're burying the lead in what they're really known for. <laughs> Better example on that one, I think. But it, it is again. I liked them both. No, but. I, I enjoyed them. Uh, but <laughs> MTG Arena, though, I think is the, it's building steam. I think there's yes. a lot of cool things happening, um, and people are excited for it. That's the other thing is that the Twitch chat and the YouTube comments are from these people who Trump brought to the stream right. and and are like, I don't know much about Magic, but I've been playing Hearthstone and I'm very excited by MTG Arena. And seeing those comments is very exciting for an old and dusty <coughs> Magic player like me. Fair enough. So what I want to also bring up on the screen for the last bit on this one, for MTG Arena, I want to show you a screenshot of how Scry works where it shows you a deck, it shows you the top card of your library, and you drag that card to the right if you want to put it on top, or you drag it to the bottom on the left side to put it on the bottom, of course. And I thought that was a really cool, graphical, exciting way that isn't just like an ugly pop-up box that says, you know, top or bottom or whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and again, you know, it's Aaron. it's a sign of the times that we're like, wow, we can, we can drag a card this way to do a thing and a drag card that way to do a thing. That's crazy. That's where yeah. we're at. Okay. Uh, Aaron, did you, have, did you have an opinion on tops and bottoms, Aaron? Oh, my God. I, no. You want to no, drag it I, on top? <laughs> we got to bring this up with Chris Cox. Top. We got to bring it up, don't we? Yep. Mr. Cox needs make, to know how I don't she know who feels. tweeted it, but there was something about how we call shirts tops in this house, and we call scries tops in yes. this house, and sometimes we call girlfriends tops. girlfriends <laughs> tops in this house. Yeah, that was Nerdwalla, who if you're not following her, you need to because she it was, was also, it was a 
top tier tweet. That's she's sure. also a vendor in her spare time, so she also has some amazing deals on singles you can't find anywhere else, and she's just really funny, so you should also follow her on Twitter. But yeah, I oh God, I'm, I'm going to get through that segment one of these days. Just One of these days. Well, let's go <laughs> on here to do uh, Desperate Ravings. Now, uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up uh, was I think Wizards... It, it's like a, it, you know, one of those really nice trolls when the troll is just so good. It's not really a troll. It's just sort of like a, it's, it's just a fine little piece of internet goodness that they made an official high res, like 1920 by 1200 or whatever. Uh, look at me. I'm the DCI by Mark Rosewater uh, wallpaper. That's amazing. We're talking about the the crayon drawn yeah. card that they actually printed in the unglued set and he has his name down there with the r backwards and it's just absolutely adorable that cracks me up i can't get over it it is really good i had to mention it so something that someone brought up on reddit which i thought was interesting uh is you remember i don't know what was it about a year ago uh, they brought up the, uh, there was that survey, remember the uh, sort of the survey for the yeah. mass market and they had these images of Amaket and Our Devastation and then this Atlazon and Conquest right. of Power, which were like Conquest of Power being like a clear one of the worst ideas for a set name ever. It's just so generic. It's ridiculous. Right. But on the front of that packaging was uh, Watuli. Is that right? Is that how you say that? Watley? Watley. Thank you. <laughs> Southern. Watley? Southern, man. Give me a break. Watuli? What the? Hey! You, you sound. Yeah, you're like. Bobby? This is literally like if Evan went to Ixalan and was trying to. So, uh, you guys going to go get Watuli for me so we can have some <laughs> diplomatic discussions? We figured um, Watuli yeah. would know what to do. <laughs> get right. me Watuli on the fu- Did you mean Watley? Yes, yeah, so that's what I. Okay. I mean, how far? All right, so <laughs> I'm bringing out the images. That's right. It's far. Come on now. Uh, I'm bringing up the images now on the screen, uh, if you don't recall, and this was the, uh, you know, click on, you know, sh- show us, you know, or tell us what you think about this packaging, tell us what you think about this sort of a presentation, yada, yada. And we're like, oh, wow, it's clear that we're going to sort of the uh, uh, sort of South American, sort of Mesoamerican, you know, type infusion. And there's a Johnny looking B.A. did not show up in Ixalan. Rivals right. of Ixalan is coming, you know, here shortly. There isn't a green white walker. Now note that they said they don't really, you know, care if the the walkers are if the color walkers in standard are necessarily balanced, but there is a green white sort of hole there that he could fill. Um and we haven't seen him in a while, and that's the thing. He isn't the gate watch, which is nice. Um so, you know, is a Johnny coming back? Is that is that gonna come to fruition? It sounds point? like it. This also appears to be a Johnny's like thing. Like this is he shows up halfway didn't, through the second act. Didn't I tell you guys that two years ago Did. when I went on my Ajani rant that YouTube roasted me for? I called this and I was like, this is what Ajani does. And this is part of the reason why I just don't see it for him. Like I'm just over the sort of act two reveal of here's a Johnny. Like no. Now, there like, wasn't a Johnny in Ether Revolt. Don't get me wrong. He, he has been there. I'm just saying it's been a whole set release. It's been another big set release. He hasn't been around. He, he is a part of the Gatewatch, right? I think I got yes. that. Yeah. Right. He has but an he, oath of a Johnny. But he did the same thing in Calidus, too. It was like, oh, here comes a Johnny to sort of save the day. Like, that's sort of his niche as, as sort of, he's like the Kool-Aid man. He just sort of breaks through the wall, and he's like, oh, yeah. And it's like... Like a Johnny, could you not? Like <laughs> a John. So we have a Johnny Unyielding who showed up in Ether Revolt. And yeah. Then, like was there another was another Johnny in Kaladesh or was that the only one? No. Well, he pulled it in Theros. Oh. He, he, he crept pulled, up in he I think this in Theros. Well he there was a, the in... Planeswalker deck version, if you want to be right. technical. Sure. I mean he's he's pulled this same trick of showing up a little bit late a couple times. Um you know, he didn't want to go to Innistrad because he was like, oh boy, you know, that place is quite dangerous. And then he didn't want to go <laughs> to Amonkhet because he was like, oh, I don't think going there is a good idea either. Maybe we should, you know, s- slow our roll a little bit. And then sometimes a planeswalker gets a little bit too big for their britches and they got to come in and, and, and he's got to, you know, rescue him like, like uh, you know, like, like the den mother that he is. Um, you know, I think it's a fine... Uh, thing for his character it's like a it's like an acceptable um uh facet of his personality i think and the fact that it translates into him only being in second sets is also acceptable to me because it's like here i come to save the day you know 
it, it is just sort of his mo. Could you say that it's he was the, the bacon on the Gatewatch cheeseburger? Is that what we're trying yes, to say here? Yes, there you go. He's right. the bacon. Johnny is that friend, and maybe some of you in chat can dig this. Johnny is that friend who, when you get, when the when you have a party and you're cleaning up after the party, and you have that one friend who watches you, and then when all of the cleaning's just about done, you're just tying up that last garbage bag, and they're like, "You need help with anything?" Yeah, and you're like, "No, sure. I've got it." Not Thanks. anymore. Like you can, yeah, like you can go put that washcloth back. Thanks. Like that's who a Johnny is. Like the gate watch is doing all the cleaning at the party, and he's just sitting there like, "Wasn't this party great, you guys?" And like yeah, when they're done, he's like, "You need anything but else?" It's not so, like he came in after everything got cleaned up. Like he's no, come but... in and like joined the fray. He's like Gandalf on the Shining Hill, as opposed I, to I showing up before the battle I... was over. I'll just say one nice thing. I would really love to see a Johnny sort of get more attention like we're seeing Veraska get right now. You know, we're really seeing some growth there. We're seeing her from the beginning. I would like to see that in the future. Like, I would love to see a set that he's there from the jump for and sort of see that arc through. I would be, I would be interested in that. I, I appreciate the, uh, from the Twitch chat, uh, I think it's Kuasta. Uh, who said uh, a Johnny X Machina is a thing? Yep, a Johnny X Machina. <laughs> he yeah, just he sure. just shows up and he's like, "Hey, I'm, I'm going to fix everything now, and then we're going to go to the next plane." It's like, hey, "Here's fantastic. where the Ascanta thing is. Let's get out of here. Bye." <laughs> he's a little bit late. Look, you have if you have a cat, you know that when they're waiting by the door, and then you open the door, and then they don't want to go out, and then you close the door, and then they want out again, and then you open the door. That's just a Johnny, but the door are planes. <laughs> he's just like. I'm a cat. Nope. He's, he's a multiverse cat. That's just yeah. what he is. He can't help himself. That's really he good. He also likes ear scritches. It's just never come up in the canon. Ear scritches. Ear scritches. Ear scritches. Yes. Scritches. That, that's pretty incredible. So um, I don't think we have time for, uh, for we were going to go through uh, a little bit of uh, the color pie exemplars. You don't think so? All right. Uh, I, I, just, I don't think we we, we really have well, it. That's in, fine. We don't us. we don't have to go through the whole thing. But Cube April, uh, friend of the show, had uh, had put up a great sort of head to head. Was a few weeks ago now. Uh, yeah. Of you know cards that really broke the color pie, and maybe we'll get back to it in a in a future show. However, uh, what I would like to do, which I I generally forget, and some people on Twitter, God bless them, even made fun of me today for it, uh, which is I start talking about the finisher, and then I go, oh wait, I got to pick a winner. Noops. Well, I can. Oh, today I can. you're actually gonna gonna give away something before the finisher starts. I am. It's crazy. Oh my god. I know, right? It's probably over 700 entries. Thanks, guys, for nice. wow. entering this one. This is awesome. So, uh, Mirabo, Mirabu, Mirabo. I think it's Mirabo. Oh, I know them. Mirabo nice. L from St. Paul, Minneapolis. Thank well, you. What? St. Paul, Minneapolis. That's what it says it's from. I'm not. <laughs> Does it Paul, really? It's, I, I'm just reading what it's had on the screen. As soon as I said it, I was like, what? That doesn't sound right. Congratulations, yeah. Mirabeau. I met well, them. Nice. I met them at GP Minneapolis a couple months ago, and they were very lovely. And I signed their playmat, and I'm super happy for them. So, so Mirabeau, uh, contact us, please, on Twitter or on Reddit, as Aaron has been uh, monitoring, monitoring that for us quite closely, which, we, which I appreciate. And can I just say, the subredditors are very upset that you two don't post anything. I had one young man say, why is it only you posting stuff? And I said I would see what I could do about encouraging you. You guys post some more. Because so. I'm a horrible, horrible person. I, like I didn't want to type that, but I, I did think that. Well, is... what we might also do is the top 10 color pie breakers, thanks to Dan oh. 9 Forever. Uh, yeah, we could just take the take the color pie uh, top 64 bracket that we have and turn that into a top 10 episode. That's good. That's I nice. like that. So, uh, so with that said, uh, congratulations to Mirabeau. Get in, get in contact, so we'll contact with us. We'll get you your gift box on Friday because that's when it releases but we're going to turn the corner to the finisher. Eternal Weekend is coming this weekend in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where folks from around the globe will convene to mostly play robots. Additionally, new the new trailers for Pacific Rim and Star Wars dropped recently, plus there was the recent USA vs. Japan mega robot battle, and the Snowbot featured on some disassembly required, and with all that together this week is quite robot-themed. So with all of the machine machinations we've discussed and all of the bugs currently in our systems, what are you hoping to upgrade in your own personal software, Ruben? Well, I've got a lot of things on my list for the developers. But in Ruben version 2.0, I'm really hoping that they fix the glitch that I currently have 
where I go upstairs to get my keys and then I find my jacket and my hat and then I make my bed and then I put away some clothes and then I come back downstairs without my keys. <laughs> which is a thing that happens a lot. <laughs> it's, it's rough. Aaron? Yeah. Well, in the Aaron Campbell open beta, new players will have to pass a quick questionnaire before they get into the main game or else they will be immediately blocked for their nonsense. Just yeah. Let's go. We're done. Um, it's not out. cool. You're out. Like the beginning of Pokemon. They have to, what, what is your rival's name? Also, do you play Rest in Peace? <laughs> <laughs> well, personally, my software has been updated enough to the point where all of my bugs aren't bugs anymore. They're just features. This is the ideal male body. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance is. Like. Ah! Oh, crap. I tatered. <laughs> he muted his microphone again, everybody. Oh, no. <laughs> what we need to do we need to start doing what they do on vsl uh when people bug out on the vsl or they potato twitch chat just spams robot emotes yes Love and it. so if if ruben ever got god if god forbid ruben potatoes again chat you gotta promise me you're gonna start spamming robots we didn't go the whole episode with robot. no taters good this, this was a tater free episode i thought it might have to do with the fact that you were wearing yellow and potato means french fry which is yellow so maybe you like made an offering to the potato gods and that's you why you're like fine. a board yeah. with like some string and it's like paper there <laughs> yellow means french fries and french fries means france and in france they're... if you i mean first of all i do have like a serial killer design on my wall right now that i'm going to show you real quick but it's because yeah. it's a DD &D map that i built mm -hmm. but i look like a crazy is? person Yes, that's a, it's a D and D map, but I'm I'm also connecting who killed JFK. Yeah, that's like the conspiracy thing. <laughs> wow. Okay. With that said, uh, that ends another episode of Magic Mike's. Thank you for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me, and come say hi to me at Eternal Weekend this weekend. She has sleeves. I have yeah. sleeves and I have stickers, and I didn't want to. I'm going to surprise this on the show. You guys don't know this. I have a spare Magic Mike's water bottle. I don't know why, but I do. And so if one of y'all is coming to Eternal Weekend and you come say hi to me and you say to me specifically, hey, I'm here for that water bottle, I will give no, you No, no, no. You have to walk up to Aaron and say, Aaron, I'm super thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, perfect. So whoever comes up to me and is the first one to say, Aaron, I'm super thirsty, I will give you my last Magic Mike's water bottle. Amazing. All that salt. That's that's how yeah. it happens. <laughs> Move here to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, my co-host, Aaron Campbell and Ruben Bressler, you guys for watching, and hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mike's. Visit our website at MagicMike'sPodcast.com that, that exists thanks to our Patreon supporters. Or follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe, do everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us on Online at twitch.tv slash magic mics on Twitter at Magic Mike's Cast, on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash magic mics, on Facebook at Facebook.com slash magic mics. Talk to us privately at magic mics podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio only podcast at magic mics podcast .com, or find us on iTunes or join us here next week. Okay, maybe not next week because I'm going to be in Germany, but <laughs> the week after. Wait, no episode next week. No episode next week, no? unfortunately, because I won't oh, be wow. in the country. I'm we sorry. We should tweet that. We will tweet and, and even maybe post to Reddit about it. <laughs> However, in two weeks, same yes. time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mike's. Good night, everybody. Evan, you forgot to thank me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> thank you. So you said thank you, Aaron. And then, and then she then we went off on a tangent. And that's my fault. I surprised, I, my announcement, my surprise announcement, that was, I, I'll take responsibility for that. I'm sorry. How <laughs> dare you? Hey, Ruben. <laughs> hey, Ruben. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Well. <laughs> You're welcome, America. Also, America. Germany. <laughs>